Hello Nuggets. Three videos in one day. Okay, so last night I went to a party and um, it was for independent filmmakers. It was by a company, an independent film company called Metamorphosis. And I made just set, put a video up about trying to socialize more, right? So that's what I was doing. I was going out to do this. And we went to this party and I realized something about myself. So I've been, um, I did a video a while ago where Laura and I went out to location hunt for this pilot we're trying to put up, or we are putting up. Um, and we watched the video back and I realized I really didn't like the way I was speaking to her. It was inappropriate. And since then, I've been trying to be a bit more mindful about who I am. And part of that is to analyze who I am. So we went to this party. And after the party, as we're driving home, I started thinking about the way I was interacting with people at the party. And I realized something about myself, thanks to this endeavor, right, uh, to become better. Um, the thing I realized about myself is that I'm sexist. Um, I'm your friendly neighborhood sexist, right? And I'm not overreacting to political correctness. I think I'm pretty balanced about this stuff. You know, I don't believe there's 50 genders. You know, I'm like, I don't believe in the pronoun stuff. Just don't think you need it. I think it's it's ridiculous. I think it's sh it's cramming shit down people's throats. It's turning into people into non-believers, people who are actually completely happy and then now kind of feel that they've been attacked. So I, I think I'm fairly balanced. Whether I'm right or wrong on that, I don't know. But I think I'm fairly balanced about it. I don't think I overreact. So when I say I'm a sexist, it's not just current climate that's changing my thought. I analyzed the way I was last night in this particular um, interaction I had and realized, yeah, I'm a sexist. And I'm a, I'm a nice guy. I, do it, I don't do it meanly. There's no malice involved. Um, but inside my head, I think I look down on women. Um, and I don't in my rational mind, but something happened last night that made me think, okay, I gotta work on this. There's something going on here. So let me tell you what happened. So we go to the party. One of the people who's there is our friend called Rayma. Her name, we've been calling her Rima for two years and her name's Rayma and she never told us. <laughs> Fucking hell, anyway. So now I'm talking to Rayma, who is a film student. She's 20 something, oh, she's very young, but she's, she's a film student, she's a screenwriter. She's studying screenwriting, I think directing and producing and all that. And she looks after our house when we're away and she looks after the dogs and she's great, you know, she's very cheap. I told her she needs to push her prices up, but she's great. She was there, we said hi to her, and she came with this other girl, right? So the other girl's name I can't remember. I'm going to call her Christina, but I can't remember her name. Let's call her Christina. So I meet this other girl, we're talking, and I said, so what do you do? What, what's your deal? And she's like, well, I've, I've only been in LA for five weeks, um, and I'm a script supervisor. That's what I want to do. So she's very excited about it, right? And I start talking to her about stuff and I'm like oh you're in first new to LA okay listen you got to do this you got to get out of town during the winter for a week at some point go and see snow go up into the hills otherwise time just flies here you forget the year has passed and seasons just roll into one you know it's LA it's always sunny um, which sounds flippant but it's actually true it's I genuinely think it's healthy if you leave California or rather leave Los Angeles once a year at least to remember, oh yeah, there's a world out there and you know, it's, it's cold sometimes. Um, so I'm telling her that and she's like, yeah, well, I'm, you know, I've only been here five weeks. It's great advice. Thank you. And I'm, I'm trying to be a script supervisor and a script supervisor is continuity, by the way. It's what they used to call continuity. The person who, who tells the director when something is amiss from the last shot, they're like, that was over there. And they're like, this is where you are in the script. Uh, this is the angle you need to do to match the other angle. They're involved in every aspect. They're like the editor before the editor gets involved in the project. You know, um, They do a lot of the groundwork to make sure the editor can execute their job well, that everything matches up as it needs to. You know, um, It's not just taking photographs of the costume and saying, oh, the lapel was up last time. So way more than that. Anyway, she's really into that, right? And so she hasn't been doing it long. She's trying to break into it. She's going to, she was actually at Seed and Spark. This thing, we didn't see her there, but she was at Seed and Spark the other day that we went to. And so I'm talking to her about it and I'm, I find myself adopting this very paternal approach to her, 
you know. I want her to do well. I don't know her really, but I want her to do well. I don't want her to get hurt by LA and by the business. And I'm encouraging and I'm like, oh, you should do this and you should go to this thing. And remember, oh, this is this will be great. And I'm really being like paternal and she's just accepting it and going like, oh, that's great advice. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to work on that. And it's, you know, it's a good conversation. We're enjoying it. And then as the conversation unwinds, unravels, I find out some information. I find out that she's been married for, I shouldn't say how long, but she's been married for quite a while, like 10 years or something. And her husband wasn't there at the party because he was back running the business that she owns. Oh, so she owns a business and she makes perfume. She's from Texas, I think she said. Yeah, Texas. Um, and it's called Boyd's of Texas or something, the perfume company. So she has a perfume company. I'm like, oh, okay. And she's like, yeah, I did that after I left the Air Force. I was in the Air Force for 10 years. Oh, what were you? Oh, oh, okay, what were you in? Intelligence. Oh, right, you were in Air Force Intelligence. I didn't really know what that was. She didn't offer me what it was, so I figured, well, maybe we don't. <laughs> we just want to talk about it. I don't know if she's drone striking people or something. But whatever it was she was doing, she was in that. And that was, I found all this information out near the end of the party. So it was fresh in my mind as we drove home. And as we drove home, I realized, God, I was so patronizing to her. I just, for some reason, made this assumption that she'd never done anything else in her life and that she needed to be protected by me in some way. That she was this vulnerable little petal, this vulnerable little flower, that if, I, if the big strong man wasn't there to protect her, we'd get stepped on. And she's done way more shit than me. I mean, or, or at least more, I don't know if she's done more, but she's, she's done some big shit, you know. She's in the Air Force and she's got her own company, which is still going, and her husband works at the company with her, and now she's taking on script supervising and she's in her life and focused. Like, she's fucking spiritually flying, you know. But I'm there in this kind of patronizing manner, the big brother, like, I'm a man, let me tell you how the world works, you know. And I'm not a mean guy, I didn't do it nastily. And I, maybe she didn't even take it this way, but it was this moment of realization. I don't know if I'd have treated the person that way if it was a man. I think if they'd have said to me, I want to be a script supervisor, I just started on it. I would look at them and I would say, oh yeah, what, what did you do before? What was going on? What else have you done in your life? Whereas for some reason with her, it was like, Oh, you finally woken up. Great, let me encourage you on this journey. As if she hadn't had an entire life before. It was sexist. That's what that is. It, it's the pigeonholing of someone, the assumption that her coming out to a party and being excited about a new project she's worked on, well, you're just a woman, so it must be the first thing you've ever done. As opposed to the fact that she's done way more shit than me. And again, not from a bad place. I wasn't being mean. Um, but it was just an assumption and women have to deal with that shit all the time, all the time. And it worries me because I don't know how to talk other than like that. I do that when I'm around women. I get very kind of caregivery, right? I get, I get very, I don't, I don't want you to be her. I want, I, I want you to be loved and to be liked and, and let me protect you from the world. They don't need my fucking protection, you know? And I'm, I'm sure, actually, maybe why lesbians in the whole, on the whole, younger lesbians don't like me. Because I think they're more direct and more able to say, what the fuck, dude, I don't need your help. You know, I'm the, I am the guy that holds the door open. I am the guy that stands up and lets someone sit down. Um, but I think that that chivalry, I also take to my attitude towards women. And that's what's unhealthy. You know, I'm a sexist. Um, yeah. That's it. She'd done all this stuff in her life and I just made an assumption she hadn't done any of it. I mean, to be fair, she was with Rayma and Rayma's young. So maybe I thought that she didn't look that young. She looked in her 30s. Now that I think about it, you know. Um, yeah, it's also I have social anxiety, right? I don't. I hate that label, but I, I'm awkward in social situations. I don't quite know who I am and I overcompensate often. So there's that as well. But in my heart, I know that if that had been a man, I would not have held the conversation the same way. I wouldn't have been patronizing. I wouldn't have made assumptions about their life. I made all of these assumptions about her because she was a woman. And therefore, I assumed that she's finally doing something with her life. She's broken out from the patriarchy. And now is the time when she's going to go take the world on by storm. And I'm sitting there going, good luck to you, not realizing I'm the patriarchy. <laughs> it's, I'm the people that she needs to break out from, the people who are just assume that she can't do anything. Anyway.
So if you're a dude watching that, watching this, keep an eye on that shit. I don't know, I'm going to work on it, see if I can get better at it. Maybe I just need to be around more powerful women. Women that will just say like, fuck off. I don't need your help. Now let's get down to business. That's what I need. All right, bye.